So this stochastic experiment, we'll look at what we call the uniform probability function, which governs things that happen with equal probability and independently. So a stochastic process has to do with the generation of random numbers. In this case, from a uniform probability distribution. And whenever we take random numbers from some distribution, that's a stochastic process. Stochastic meaning having to do with random numbers or chance. And this type of distribution is a flat line distribution. We'll see more of it later on in the course. But you can think of it as the one that governs the roll of a die or the flip of a coin. If you flip a coin, right, and it's an unbiased coin, there's a 50-50 chance that it will come up heads or tails. Heads has 50% chance and tails has a 50% chance or 0.5 probability because those are the only two possible outcomes with a fair coin. Likewise, with a single die, we can see here, a single die can have a one come up, a two come up, a three come up, a four, five, or a six come up. And when we say come up, it means facing upwards. So a fairly weighted die, like the kind you would get in um, uh, casinos, has an equal chance of any of those faces coming up, face one, two, three, four, five, or six, on a fair roll. So whenever we roll the die, there can be only one outcome, and each, each face has an equal probability associated with it showing upwards. So since there are six individual faces on a die, there's a one-sixth chance of any face showing upwards, or 0 0.166 repeating. And we can look at that and say, for example, um, if I roll the die 100 times, my expectation then might be that one-sixth of the time, I'd have ones, one-sixth of the time I'd have twos, but at no particular time can I predict the outcome. So I can't throw it and predict that it will be a one this time because it was a two last time. I can't predict that it'll be a six this time because it was a five last time or even a six previously because we have an equal chance for each face showing up. In R, we can simulate rolling die to see what happens. If we roll die a certain number of times, does in fact rolling a die 100 times produce one six of the time faces showing one? one-sixth of the time showing twos, and is that really uh, a type of outcome where 16.6% of the time, um, each face will have come up in a 100 rolls. So let's go back to, I'll just go over here to R, and I'll say, okay, uh, make, a fair, make a die. I'll just put it here in my script window. So that die will just be, um, I'll just call it the die. And that's equal to numbers one, two, three, four, five, six. So those are the faces. And if I run that, then I have a, just a vector here with the numbers one, two, three, four, five, and six in them. Now let's simulate a roll of the die. Okay. To simulate a roll, we have a function called sample. Sample takes in any vector or matrix and spits out however many samples you want. And we just want one sample. So I'm gonna say sample die one. I'll just save that in S for sample. I'll just print S out. So now I'll run that. So that's a roll of the die now. Every time I run sample, that's a roll of a die. And if I roll it, if I do it again, that's a second roll. So these first two rolls, a two came up, and then a six comes up, and then a three, and then a four, two, four, five, six, and we could tabulate these, right? 
we could we could record how many times each die uh, shows a one, how many times each throw comes up as a one, I should say, how many times each throw comes up with, as a two or as a three or as a four. And sample can do that because it chooses with equal probability any of these six numbers in that vector where each number has a one six chance of being chosen each time. And that simulates our die roll. So we want to record which face comes up after each roll. And notice each roll is independent of the previous roll. Every time I run these, these, this line here, sample, that's an independent time I'm running it. It's sampling with equal probability each of the numbers within the die. Well, it's picking one number with equal probability of selection. So I want to replicate that process to get, let's say, 100 different die rolls. So I can use the replicate function. And I'll call this uh, rolls, oh, uh, rolls equals replicate. How many times do I want to replicate this? 100. And my expression, EXPR, will be equal to um, sample die one, like that. So I don't need the second line anymore. Call that simulate 100 die rolls. Oh, LLS, like so. So just replicating that, running that once, now in rolls, I have 100 rolls of the die. Each time, each roll is an independent from, each, from the previous. And so I want to see the frequency of these things. Like, so how many threes came up, how many twos, how many ones, etc. And the process of rolling the die is stochastic because each roll is independent and it's based on random selection, so random numbers. We don't know which, which will face up. So here in this example, uh, the first roll was a one, the second roll was a six. And there's no way based on the first two, based on the first two, to predict what the third one would be, or the fourth one, or the 50th one, or the last one. All we know is that for each sample that happens, each face has an equal chance of showing upwards or being selected. But we can predict with absolute certainty that if we roll these die, or this die I should say, many, many, many times that exactly one six of those times the face will have been a one. One six, the face will be a two. One six of the time, the face will be a three. Um, and if we look at what we have so far, if I say hist, to make a histogram, hist rolls, to look at the frequency, it looks like that. Here we have, well, um, we'll put it in terms of density. So hist rolls. Like so. Oh, that's not how I wanted that. Hist. Let's just look at hist for a second. I can't remember which parameter it is. So histogram in the regular graphics package. Oh, we're going to hold many things in here. We want it to be a density. Density, no. Or probability equals true, no, frequency. I think we just want frequency equals false. To look at proportional. So we'll say freq equals false. That's better. So now we have proportional. Um, it doesn't look quite proportional though. Is the density because we have 40 
is 50. We have over 100, so over one, so that's not really showing what we want either. Uh, but what's ultimately important here is that we see a graph where we have bars, you know, one is the uh, face one, two here is face two, three is the face three, four is the face four, five is the face five, and six over here is the face six. And some in this particular 100 rolls of that die, this came up more often, so a lot of sixes came up. So I'm just gonna bring that hist over here and I'll do another one. I'll replicate the rolls and the histogram. You'll see it change. Oh, wow, this time, the exact same number of ones and twos came up. Um, and they're much more even now across here, across the top. They're starting to look more even in terms of the number of heads of each kind that came up. If I run that again, see it looks different every time. Every time it's slightly different. because each is the roll of 100 die, recording which face shows upwards each time. So we can look at the absolute frequency using the table function of R. Oops, skipped ahead a bit. So the table function just summarizes the number of unique values for each of the uh, sample numbers. So one, two, three, four, five, six at the top here. And then this is how many times each one comes up. So I'll add it in here. So I'll have the histogram to look at and I'll also say table and I'll call the table out T equals table and that'll be rolls like so. And we'll just show T. So for that last histogram, this is just the raw numbers now. We have 15, 16, 14, 16, 23, and 16. So I could divide that, just say table divided by 100 to get the proportions instead of absolute numbers. So I'll just do that. And there we go. I'll see all it does is move the decimal place over. And we see 0 0.15, 0 0.16, 0 0.14, 0 0.16, 0 0.23, 0 0.16. So a lot of them are around 0.16, you know, 0.15, except in that particular role, set of roles, uh, we have that coming up, which is 23% um, of the time, uh, and a five showed up that time. So let's just run those three lines again. Oh, we'll do another replication as well and see how those look. So again, a lot of them close to 0 0.16, 0 0.19, 0 0.13, um, uh, but there's a, yeah, 0 0.13, so a very small number of sixes that time, and a very large number of the other ones. So you get the idea there. Now, what we're looking for, well, what's our prediction? If each face, right, has an equal chance of coming up every time you roll the die, then, each face has a one six chance or one six times 100 of 16.6 times. So out of a hundred rolls, um, we might expect around 16.6 times for each face. We can actually have 0.6. Um, no, of course it's possible. Yes, we could because it's a frequency. And we already noted that a lot of them are around 0.16 each time we do that 100 rolls. So that's what we just did. And that's, by the way, called the relative frequency. So once we divided, we had absolute frequency. The absolute frequency is just the number of rules. So when I say T in the table, that's the absolute frequency of that last run. Because it's showing the absolute numbers of things, which is the same on the histogram down here then to make it a relative frequency, we just sum all of the rules, which is 100 in our case, 
and we divide that by each of the individual counts in the outcome. So 0.16 divided by 100, 0.16, 20 divided by 100 is 0 0.20, etc. So it's called the relative frequency. <clears throat> so what, what happens when we start to make our number of rules larger? So let's have a look. So here, we'll make another variable at the top just called n roll, just to make things easier. n rolls will be, we'll start with 1,000 this time, and instead of 100 here, as a hard-coded variable, or a hard-coded constant, I'll put n rolls, like that. So now 1,000 will be put there the first time. And of course, to make a relative frequency, we want that to be the table at the end to be divided by n rules. So there we go. So we'll just run those lines again, see what happens. We'll run them many times. And again, we're still getting, we're getting most of them being close to 0.16 something, or not too far from 0.16. And you but there's still variation. So let's do 10,000. Wow, now that everything is 0 0.16. 0 0.1696, 0 0.1634, 0 0.16, 0 0.17, etc. If I try it again, again, very similar. Everything is around 0.16 to two decimal places. What if I do 100,000 rolls? Takes a bit longer, of course. But now I have everything, again, to two decimal places, 0 0.168, 0 0.165, 169, et cetera. And we have very, very similar, uh, almost a flat line, you know, across the top of the rules. So if I do a million, this will take a little bit of time, but look at that. With a million rules, we now have 0 0.166, 0 0.166, 0 0.166, 0 0.166, 0 0.166. We now have a um, 0.16 or 16.6% .6 chance, 16.6% .6 of the time observed, uh, each face came up. And this is called the long run prediction. In that for 100 rolls, we, we're not going to get, we shouldn't expect to get 0.16. Six, 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 etc. Um, times for uh, the one showing up as the face, or the two showing up as the face. One six for the three, one six for the four, etc. But as we increase our number of rolls up to a million rolls, now we're pretty. We can be pretty confident, can't we? And with a million rolls, we have a prediction of sixteen point six percent of the time. Um, you know each face will have shown up in that 1 million rolls. We can't say when in the 1 million rolls any particular face will show up, but over a million rolls, we now have a way to predict that. By doing an infinite number of rolls, we would have 0.1666666 to infinity, the exact probability of 1 divided by 6. Oops, of 1 divided by 6, like that. So after an infinite number of rolls, we would have this going on uh, to infinity. It would be an exact prediction. And that's called the long run outcome. And we can see that here just again in graphical form at 100 rolls. And again, the red, the red line here on these graphs just represents the expected or theoretical outcome which is one sixth of the time each face should show up after an infinite number of rolls. So with a hundred rolls, it's very uneven. A thousand, it gets more even. A hundred thousand, it even gets, you know, almost perfectly even at the top. And we just saw a million gets even better. So a stochastic process can't be predicted for any one outcome. We never know when we roll the die, which face will show up. But we do know with certainty that if we roll the die 
enough that every face will have showed up an equal amount of the time. And some key terms here, absolute frequency, relative frequency, stochastic, long run outcome, and the expected value. The expected value of ours was point, uh, 0.1 divided by 6, or 16.6% .6 of the probability.